Let's turn today to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17 and verse 12. Here we read of how the Berean Christians believed, not because the man who preached was a great man like Paul, but because they examined the scriptures, verse 11, to see whether even what Paul said was correct. A very healthy habit, as I was saying last week, for all Christians to develop. Check up everything that every preacher preaches from the pulpit, no matter how great a man he is, how well-known he is, how mightily he's been used in the past, and even if he's an apostle, even if it is an angel that's come down from heaven. God's word is superior to every man's word, and even to the word of an angel. If only we would develop this habit, we would be saved from wrong doctrines, from becoming cultistic, and from destroying ourselves. The Holy Spirit would also call us noble-minded, as it says in verse 11. And believe not because Paul preaches it, but because God's word says so. God may use a human channel, but the human channel should lead us to God's word. And if you're a preacher, don't preach your own thoughts. Preach God's word. Faith doesn't come by your thoughts or reasoning. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. So I want to exhort you, preach God's word. Many therefore believed along with a number of prominent Greek women and men. God has chosen the poor of the world, rich in faith. There are not many rich or great in God's kingdom, but there are a few. And so we see there were a few prominent Greek men and women too. But when the Jews of Thessalonica found out that the word of God had been proclaimed by Paul in Berea, they came there likewise agitating and stirring up the crowds. We read in verse 5 in our last study that the Jews became jealous. Now here, their jealousy knew no bounds. They traveled all the way to Berea when they heard that people there were getting converted. They had to somehow suppress this man's, Paul's ministry. And so the Jews came there and they stirred up the crowds and told all types of lies, the same thing that's happened for 2,000 years against God's servants. And immediately the brethren sent Paul out to go as far as the sea, again fulfilling Jesus' command, when they persecute you in one city, flee to another. But Silas and Timothy remained in Berea. The Jews were not after Silas and Timothy. They were after Paul, who was the preacher. And so Silas and Timothy, they were okay. They stayed there. But Paul went out to sea. And those who conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens. And uh, he sent a message back with them, asking Silas and Timothy to come as soon as possible. And they left Paul in Athens. And here was Paul all alone in this city of Athens, doesn't know anybody there, no believers, no Christians, in this great city of Greece. And while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, for Silas and Timothy, he walked around the city and his spirit was provoked. Read this word, dear friends. Acts 17, verse 16. While Paul was waiting for Silas and Timothy at Athens, his spirit was being provoked within him, which means it was continuously provoked because he saw the city full of idols. The city was full of idols, very similar to many cities in the world today, many cities in our own country. Why was Paul's spirit provoked? Because his spirit was so much in fellowship with God who hates idols, who hates idolatry, who gave so many commands against idolatry in the Old Testament and against making idols. Paul was so much in fellowship with God, so filled with the Holy Spirit, that his own spirit sensed the hatred that God has for idolatry, and his spirit was provoked. Why is it that we can walk through a city full of idols, and find our spirit is not provoked. Do you know the reason? We are not so much in fellowship with God as Paul was. We get used to idolatry. We get used to sin. And we are not stirred. We are not in touch with God. We are so taken up with the world, or we seek for peace with the devil so much, that we are not stirred. I believe we need to be continuously stirred wherever we see anything that dishonors God in the world, whether it is sin or idolatry or adultery or people making money in the name of religion like Jesus was stirred when he saw the 
people making money in the temple of God, in the name of God, we need to be stirred. We mustn't just sit back and accept all these things and we're not in fellowship with God. Why was Jesus stirred in the temple when he saw those people making money in the name of God? Because he knew that God and money are two different masters. You cannot mix them. What shall we say when people in Christianity make money in the name of religion, in the name of Jesus Christ? Our spirit must be stirred like Jesus was in the temple. Then we are true servants of God. And so he went to the synagogue again in Athens. And there he reasoned with the Jews and the God-fearing heathen in the marketplace every day with those, whom he hap those who happened to be present. He was a bold man. He was not afraid of his life. He had given up his life to Jesus Christ. He didn't love his own life. And so the devil could have no power over him. If you love your own life, the devil will have power over you. But when you hate your life, like Jesus told us to, then the devil has no power over us. And so he could preach boldly even in the marketplace. He was not ashamed to proclaim the truth about Jesus Christ in the marketplace, not just in the synagogue. There are two places we need to preach, inside the meeting hall and in the marketplace, in the open. Paul did both, as we read in verse 17. And we read there some of the great philosophers and scholars, the heathen people of that time, some of the Epicurean, the fine, polished people of that time, and the stoic philosophers were conversing with him. The people who believed in rigid, disciplined lives, self-control and all that, but who were not converted. The devil has people who are debaucherous and adulterous serving him one way, and he's also got clever philosophers and scientists who apparently live good lives on the external, were not converted, also serving him in another way. And here were some of these also philosophers conversing with him. And some were saying, what is this idle babbler wishing to say? They despised him even before they heard him. And others said he seems to be a proclaimer of strange gods or strange demons, as the margin says. They said that what Paul was proclaiming was the doctrine of a demon. The truth was considered as some strange teaching. The original Greek says he's a proclaimer of strange demons. Because he was preaching Jesus in the resurrection. They'd never heard of the resurrection. And they'd never heard of Jesus. That was a demon according to them. Well, that's what the devil thinks. And what he makes people think anyway. That he is God and that Jesus is a demon. And that is the stupidity of people. Even today we find in many places. But that the true servants of God are considered the servants of Satan. And the servants of the devil are very often exalted to positions of respectability very often, even in Christian circles. But Paul was fearless. He was a prophet. He wasn't a man holding an office or a position in Christianity to get honor for himself. He is a prophet, a servant of God. He proclaimed Jesus and the resurrection. And they took Paul and brought him to the Areopagus and said, May we know what you are preaching here. That is a big hill that belonged to one of their gods, one of their idols. And they said, now let me know what's this new teaching you're proclaiming. Let's all know it, for you're bringing some strange things to our ears. We want to know what all this means. And all the Athenians and strangers visiting there used to spend their time in nothing other than telling or hearing something new. That is a characteristic also of the human race, to always discuss something new and to find an excitement in discussing something new. Something novel. They're not really interested in God, just to gossip. But Paul took the opportunity and stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, he didn't insult them, he didn't straight away condemn them for their idolatry, no, he knew that they were blind and we need to be wise in the way we speak to idol worshippers. He said, I observe that you're very religious. You see, we have to be respectful. The Bible says, be always ready to give an answer to any man who asks a reason for the hope that is in you, 1 Peter chapter 3, with meekness and respect. Can you speak to a heathen man who is completely blind with meekness and respect? That's how we should speak. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2.17, honor all men. Never speak to people in a despising way. Paul never did it. We may disagree, our spirit may be provoked, but don't let the feelings we have in our spirit Make us lose our self-control. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. That's a very important verse 
that I quoted in 1 Peter chapter 3 that we must remember at all times. 1 Peter 3.15 Be always ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account of the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. Can you speak to a heathen man with reverence even though you know he's completely wrong and perhaps an idol worshipper? Then learn a lesson from the Apostle Paul. When he stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I observe that you are very religious. Some of these people who worship idols are completely mistaken, completely deceived, but they don't know any better. They've been deceived by the devil. They may be sincere, but they're wrong. We're not to disrespect them. In reverence, win their confidence and tell them the truth. And he said, while I was passing through and examining the objects of your worship, I also found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. What therefore you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. Notice how he starts. He doesn't start with the Old Testament here, because these people have no respect for the Old Testament. They don't even accept the Old Testament. We need to know where to start with when we're speaking to people. Is it a Christian who accepts the Bible? Then you can start with the Bible. Is it a person who doesn't even accept the authority of the Bible? Then it's no use starting with the Bible. Let's start at some point where we can meet him at his need. God is creator, his conscience, that convicts him of sin. And then go to the Bible. Of course, we must go to the Bible, but that need not be our starting point. And so we see here, he says, I saw an altar to an unknown God. What a wonderful starting point. He says, that God whom you worship in ignorance, I proclaim to you. And all of us can learn a lesson in courtesy and respect in preaching the gospel to the heathen from this example of the Apostle Paul.